Rubik's Cubes. Uh, I'm going to talk about sort of methods and theory behind solving a Rubik's Cube blindfolded. Um, jump right into blindfolded just because it's more mathematically interesting. Um, that big number I've got there is the number of positions a Rubik's Cube can be in, and only one of them solved. So that has a lot to do with why the Rubik's Cube is so hard to do. <laughs> um, so in Rubik's Cube blindfolded, you get a chance to look at it first. It's not a magic trick. So you get a chance to look at it, have as long as you want, and memorize it. Then you put your blindfold on and you solve it. So if you pull a Rubik's Cube apart, you find these pieces here. These ones here, I'll pass them around. Yeah, stickers on them, but. Um, yes, there's three unique types of pieces. There's the centre, which is these bits here. I'm showing my work, but um, and you don't solve the centre. You sort of think of solving the other pieces around the centre. Because those axes are locked, it's just one piece and it's always solved anyway. Um, then you've got your corners, which have got three stickers on them. And they sit in the corners, and you've got your edges, which you've got two stickers on, and they sit in between two corners. And it's really important when you're solving Rubik's Cube to consider that it's not 54 stickers, it's 21 pieces. So if you look at those pieces, you can't pull it apart. The stickers that should be on those pieces, but they're not because I took them off, are. Um, they're locked together, so it's one piece, and so trying to move them apart is futile, basically. Um, and it's really important to also remember that they're distinguishable. There's, they're all unique. There's no two pieces on a three by three Rubik's cube that are the same. So you've got like your blue, orange, and white piece, and this is blue, white, and red. There's no other piece like that, and that's the same for every piece on the cube. Um, yeah. Oh, and you talk about slots and pieces. So a slot is like this place here that a piece could potentially be, and a piece is the place that the slot could be. Does that make sense? <laughs> kind of confusing. Um, so if you look at this cut here, this green and white edge piece is in between green and white centre. So it's in the right place, but it's upside down. And so you say that it's permutation, the place where it is on the cube, is solved but its orientation, the way that it's turned it up in its slot, is wrong. And this piece here, the green, orange, and white corner, is in between the green, orange, and white centers, but once again, it's flipped up the wrong way. It's like that. So it's got the right permutation, but the wrong orientation. And this piece is in the wrong place, because it's green, red, and white, and this is green, orange, and white, you can't really tell on this projector. But it's, it's kind of hard to think of, but it's in, it's oriented right, because if I find the green, orange, and white, if I bring the, it's like that, and if I do the one move, when it gets back where it wants to be, it's fully correct. So basically, it's really hard to define your orientations when they're not the right spot, but um, you'd have it where for edges, the moves um, F to B to or R, L, U or D. Uh, yeah, all the, the moves that, I, I should explain the notation actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So the letters F, B, R, L, and D, which 
share the commas between them. They mean the side, and they mean turning its respective side clockwise, which can trick you because if you have the front side goes clockwise is that way, but the back side going clockwise is that way. So you've got to look at it and towards the cube. Um, so these moves, basically, you can't do a quarter turn on front and back. That screws up orientations of edges. And the corners, because there's three states, it's more strict and it's F2, B2, R2, L2, U, D. So you can only do corner turn, quarter turns on the top and bottom. Um, oh, and L prime is the same as, it's anti clockwise and now, so it's the same as L, 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 because if I do one, two, three turns, it's the same as if I had just gone anti clockwise once. Does that make sense? And you also use, like, L2 is just two outputs. It's at 180 degree. So, so prime means going any clockwise then? Yep, exactly. Sweet. Um, this notation is standard for all Rubik's Cubers, but this notation is mine and it's a bit crazy. I didn't realise how crazy it was until I wrote it down. Um, <laughs> it's not so bad. I use, you don't need to know this, it's just when I say A, you might have an idea of what I'm maybe talking about. <laughs> Letters are the edges, numbers are the corners. So this is the, like, the top layer over here, right? I'll just go A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4. The middle layer doesn't have any corners in it, so there's no numbers. And then the bottom layer is the same as the top layer. It's got it's corners and edges. Who's confused by that? Is that the cross section? Yeah, the cross section. Like that layer, and then that layer, and then that layer. Make sense? Yeah, um, I never really realised that I went clockwise, anti clockwise, anti clockwise. <laughs> when I wrote it down, I thought, what? <laughs> but basically, when I use these letters, numbers, like these ones, as opposed to that R's, B's, L's, M's, D's, D's, even with the D there, and L there, um, I'm talking about the slot, not the piece. I would use a little letter for a piece. So that means the slot A. Right. So, if we think of the moves, or just, if you take a bunch of these moves and put them together, you call it an algorithm, which is just a list of moves. Um, so if you had a algorithm that was of the form A, B, A prime, B prime, right? Where A is some set of moves, B is some set of moves, A prime is doing A backwards, so you're just undoing A, and B prime is doing B backwards. This is called a commutator, and it's similar to commutators in maths. It's the where same. Yeah, it's the same. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> um, if, you got to think, it's like, if A was putting your socks on and B was putting your shoes on, if you do them in the opposite order, you don't get the same result. <laughs> Where if A was putting your socks on and B was putting your hat on, doesn't matter which order you do it in. So when you do this, if it was socks and shoes, you're going to end up with torn socks because you're trying to take your socks off before you're taking your shoes off. It just doesn't work. What you're saying is that you don't commute. That yeah, exactly. Matters or the matters well, tops and hat doesn't. Don't they commute? Yeah. Um. Uh, I 
I have jumped it here. <laughs> right. We'll get to that. <laughs> That's good. Um, roll with it. Yeah, roll with it. Um, no, it's bad. If I have, so I can take a cube and say like the piece in slot A needed to go to B, and then this piece needed to go to E, and then this piece needed to go to wherever. So we had A, B, C, with curly braces. Um, this is sort of describing the state of the cube. So what this is saying is the piece in slot A needs to go to B, and then B needs to go to C, and then C needs to go all the way back to A. Right? And it could be longer. Obviously it can't be longer than 12 because there's only 12 edges. But yeah, so that's just a, it's how I, I describe the state. Um, but if we say did well, we've got to figure out a way to solve these sort of things, right? So we could start by putting A in B, right? By some arbitrary process. But then where does B, the bit that within B go? Because you can't have two pieces in the same spot. So say if we just did A, B. Horrible oh, we'll cut <laughs> What do we get? Well, the piece that's in A goes to B. So B solved, and the piece that's in B goes to A. So the piece that was in B that needed to go to C is now in A. So we end up with A, C. I can't be cutting braces. <laughs> Does that make sense? So, and then we can just do A, C. So you could have some really long thing that was I, B, D, E, F, A, right? And you could do I, B, right? And B would be solved, but the piece that was in B would be an I. So you just cross that out, right? And then you could do I, D. And D would be solved, but the piece that was in D would be an I. So you can just cross that out. And you keep going on until you get to here and you do I, A. The piece that was in A did need to go to I, so the whole thing's solved. Right, so you just need, instead of having to not learn every possible combination on the cube, you just need to do every pair of letters, which is still huge, there's still 12 times 11 combinations of letters just for edges, but it's, it's progress from 43 quintillion. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think this sort of describes it. Don't get too freaked out, Chris. So, we have this state here. And it needs to do this, right? So we can do A, B, C, and we get this. But if we start with the same thing, and we just do A, B, the red and the blue ones swap, right? So we get over here with the red and blue swapped. And then if we carry on, and we do A, C, then the blue and the green ones swap, and we get to here, which is the same as this up here. See? So that's just another way of showing that. But <laughs> might confuse you. Uh, yeah, so if we consider what one move on the cube, like just that, does, right? This piece is going to go to here, this piece is going to go to here, this piece is going to go to here, and this piece is going to go to here, right? And the same thing for the corners. So they're both four long, right? So if you were to split them up into their individual cycles, you would get three, right? Because you would cross out the two, and then cross out the three, and then cross out the four. So you say that they're odd, right? Because odd three is odd. So your one move is an odd permutation in corners, and it's an odd permutation in edges. But in the entire thing, it's an even permutation. Does that make sense? Because odd plus odd is even. Right? So what it means is no matter how many even numbers you've had together, you're always going to get an even. So no matter how many moves you do, the entire permutation of the cube is always going to be even. Right? That's important because 
it basically means half of all the combinations that would be possible if you just pulled the cube apart and put it together disappear. Right? So if we go on, what it means is that this, right, this, to solve this, we're assuming the back side of the cube solved. These just need to swap, right? That's one swap. That's all. So it's impossible. Right? And then this, this is once again, it's just one swap. It's odd, so it's impossible. Right? And if I told you and made a bit more explicit about orientations, you could do the same thing with orientations. So you basically you find that you can't have a flip. And the flips of edges have to be a, a whole number. So this is half a term, right? So it's impossible, right? And the same thing with corners. A flip of corners has to be a whole number, it has to be a whole term, right? So you could have like a third turn, a third turn, and a third turn, but that's possible, because a third plus a third plus a third is one, but you couldn't have just one turn, so it's impossible, right? And the same with edges, you could have, if this one here was flipped up as well, that would be possible. So basically, a twelfth of all the cube states just disappear. They're impossible. You can't get them through moves without pulling it apart. Right, now on the commutators. <laughs> so, <coughs> where do we get the commutator? So, you have these commutators, and if we consider the commutator where A is R and B is U, right? So, if this region here is all the pieces that are moved by R, Right, so if I do if I do an R move, that's all the pieces that are affected by R. But this region here, and, and this region here, is all the pieces that are affected by B. Right? And this is the union of <coughs> intersection of A and B. <laughs> so we call this the action zone, where they two halves of the commutator intersect. Um, this, these pieces are the pieces that are drug into here by A, right? So like our action zone is these three pieces here. And if I do an R move, these three get moved into there, right? Um, and these pieces are the pieces that get drug into here by B, right? So if I do a U move, these pieces get drugged to here. And this is the union of this and this and this. Right? And basically, the only pieces affected on the cube by the commutator is this zone here. Which isn't that useful yet. Like, you look at that and there's still a significant amount of the cube messed up. We can't work out much of what's going on. But if we move on, and instead of doing, instead of having a being just an R move, we now use the last one we did twice. So the last one was called the sexy move. So we're doing the sexy move, we're doing it twice, just for an unknown reason. And for B, we're going to just do another single move, we'll do D, right? So the pieces affected by A are these pieces, as we proved before. And the pieces affected by B are just the D layer, the bottom layer. So the intersection of the two is just this one piece here. Right, and now comes the reason I chose double sexy instead of single sexy, is the pieces drug into here by A is an even set. So basically the piece that was here remains here, if I do it. The blue, orange, and yellow thing is still in, the blue, in between the blue, orange, and yellow <coughs> centers. Right, which seems nice. Um, and then the pieces drug into here by the D is just this single piece here. So the union of these three is now just these two. Right. 
So, because of the rules about what's possible on a cube we learned earlier, we know that these two pieces can't be swapped because that's impossible. It would be an odd permutation. But they could be flipped. One could be flipped clockwise and the other could be flipped counterclockwise. And that's exactly what happens if I do the rest of the... You end up with just those two pieces flipped like that. <laughs> um, which is very handy because now we can flip these two corners. But we don't know which way they're flipped. So basically, you have to, the way you do it, just track this piece, work out whether it was flipped clockwise or anti-clockwise, and then this piece is flipped the other way. And this sexy is considered a framework for a commutator, because instead of a D, we could have done a D prime, and then this piece would have been sucked in. So it would have been these two swapped. Does that make sense? I have a question. Yep. Why is it called a sexy? Because <laughs> it's sexy. <laughs> it just, it right. really is. <laughs> oh, and, <laughs> yeah. Um, or we could have done a D2 and it would have been the corner that we can't see in the background and this piece. Or we could have, but this is getting real far out, we could have done an upside down sexy. So basically. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, mirror image it around the centre. So it's a wee bit different, but you can just think about what upside down sexy would look like. And you would <laughs> then flip the two on the top. Or you could rotate sexy any way you want. And you can flip any two, or even if you're really smart, three corners on the cube. So basically, by analysing these few moves, we can now flip any corners we want. And there's other frameworks for other commutators similar to this. If you do a single sexy, you actually end up with three corners swapped. And if you do a single sexy with a middle layer, you end up with three edges swapped. And you can almost solve every cube using just a sexy commutator. Except, because commutators are A, B, A prime, B prime, they're always an even number of moves. So they're always going to be even in corners and edges. So you, if it's odd in corners and edges, you can't actually solve it with commutators. You have to do, because it's always an even number of moves, basically. Um, where are we? Right. Now, where is it? Let's see something. Who's still my cue? Oh, here it is. <laughs> right, this one. It's the same as the big sheets. Um, if, so we were given, we come across this case in a solve. It looks horrible. I don't know an algorithm to solve it. I don't think anyone does. We're, and we're assuming the grey stuff's all solved. I'll just cut that out so you can't get confused. So basically we've got to swap these two pieces, piece two and three, and these two pieces, piece B and E. Right? But, with a bit of that thought, if I did an L prime move, this, we get this. And this should be double arrows because it's actually swapped, but yeah. Um, which, I do know that case, it's called a T prime. And that's quite a common case, it's just one year when Cuba knows. <laughs> so, by doing that, we've taken a case we don't know to a case we know. So this brings up a whole new type of moves called conjugates, which come of the form A, B, A prime, right? And basically A is called the setup move. So you're, set, you're taking a case you don't know, setting it up to a case you do know, and then just taking it back. So I take this, I don't know this case, I do this, and say, oh, it's a T prime, I solve the T prime, and then I take it back, and all these pieces are solved. Does that make sense? And between commutators and conjugates, that's all you need to know to solve one cube blind fold, really. That few pendy algorithms. Um, so this, 
is a cube that Alex scrambled for me last night. And I went through and I found all the cycles. So these are the edges, right? I had a, what, one, two, three, seven? Yeah, seven cycle of edges, and then another two, and then we swap, and then another three. Um, so I remembered that with this, right? Ben ate the elephant. So I envisioned my best friend Ben eating an elephant. <laughs> Hadley kicks a lion, and I had an extra letter, so I just put an image right. <laughs> so with images, I always try and go um, person, verb, noun. Um, just because it makes good stories. <laughs> um, this DJ was a really easy one because, well, it's DJ. <laughs> um, the more vision you get with your images, the easier it is to memorize. And what was, what was that word? It was polarized. <laughs> what did you use in the email the other day? Oh, polarized. Yeah, this is polarized. <laughs> For those who know what that means. <laughs> um, I have a good imagination. <laughs> and then the last one, Indiana. Indiana is Indiana Jones, so I literally hear the music. Like, dun, dun, dun. And he's got a pair of white cats chilling through the fence. <laughs> but, yeah, I had to be all right, so. <laughs> it's more than that. Um, so these are my corners, permutations. Um, I, I don't use Images for that. I, so three five seven to me is that's how I remember it. So that's piece three. Tap it because it goes all the way opposite to three, and then I drag my finger over to seven. I just remembered dragging my finger over the pieces, but that's just me. You can make up your own memorization method, and then yeah, the same thing with two six eight one four. Or you can just remember the numbers. It's not hard to remember three five seven two six eight one four. Just a phone number. <laughs> well, if you, you can all remember a phone number, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to. <laughs> oh, good day. <laughs> um, and then these lines here are the edges that need to be flipped, right? So I had six, which is the average number of edges you would expect to be flipped, because half of them are flipped. And notice it comes in at six, it's an even number. It should always be an even number. If it's not, check again because it is. <laughs> um, so I remembered it with all blacks, right? Oh, that's just kidding. <laughs> but, valorized, yes. <laughs> um, and these are my corner orientations. So, which corners need to be flipped. And positive and negative means clockwise and random clockwise. So if I don't remember it like that at all, it's the first thing I solve on the cube, so I just know it's I just took no stuff, just look at it and solve it quickly before I forget. <laughs> um, so how would I go solving this? Well, I would so obviously you're gonna try and do like try and do B A and cross out the A and then B E and then cross out the E and then B H cross out the H, so on. Right, so I use a T parent. Right, which was the one I showed you before. <coughs> this is the top of the Rubik's Cube. It swaps those two corners and those two edges. Because trying to do just BA is an odd permutation, so it's impossible. So you can't just swap these two. So by sacrifice, I also swap these two corners. Right? So this is like looking this way, it's these two and these two. <coughs> So I would do BA. So I would, what I would do is I would, so A is that bit there. I would put A here using something that I make up. And I have to make sure I don't break these up while I do it. I would do a T parent, which would put A there and B there. B needs to go to A. And then I would undo the moves I did to put A, a there. And then A would be solved. That's one piece down. And then I would go to the next one, and I would put E here, do a T parent. And every time I do it, these corners get swapped. So they're going back to where they originally were, but swapped again. They keep going back and forward. 
Um, so, but if you look at this, this has got seven, right? So it's going to take six little two swaps, six T primes to solve. This has got two, so it's going to need to take one. This has got three, so it's going to take two T primes to solve. One plus two plus what was it, six is an odd number, right? So afterwards, I'm going to have all my edges solved, but these are going to be the wrong way around. And this is called parity. It happens half the time. I specifically chose a case that had it. Um, so you could just realize, oh, so this is piece three, this is piece four. I just need to swap three and four here. But that leads to her brains and unsolved cubes. <laughs> so what I do is, because when I'm solving my corners, I'm going to use a T-parent again and have as my sort of buffer things swapping these edges every time. So I'm going to be putting piece 5 there, piece 7 there. So I just do a T-param, which will fix these and put these out, right, and start swapping again. And because of the can only be even permutations, there's, because if I have an odd permutation here, I'm also going to have an odd permutation here. So when I get to the end, these will be solved, hopefully. Though there should be, in theory. So that is basically the process of how you solve your permutations. The orientations, you actually solve before the permutations, because if you've moved a piece, you're like, oh, piece A was flipped. Oh, where's piece A gone? What's in? Otherwise, right, the, there's a 50% chance that you're going to be odd in these, and then it screws up the rest. And that's where, who's heard of the term parity? Who's ever tried to solve this before? <laughs> Am I there? <laughs> I'm <trying to> <laughs> um, that's what, one of the hard things. And once you get a, uh, a six by six, every single type of parity that could exist does exist. And they don't get any harder. And all the same stuff applies to these ones. The, dodecahedrons, just that there's five on every side, so one turn, you can't even be odd in edges. So I suppose you want me to do it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you can do it, Ethan. We believe in you. Yeah. 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 What was it? I should have all my orientations to solve for now, in theory.
I always start at B, right? This would be B. But when I come to solve this, which I didn't do, um, it starts with D, which is a bit annoying because it's here. So what I actually do is I do... I would, instead of doing just DJ, I would do B, D, J, B, right? Which has the same effect, but basically what you're doing is every swap's a B one now. Why you break it? <laughs> <laughs> So this is called breaking into a new cycle. So basically you would do BD, which isn't part of what we're meant to be solving, but it puts D in B. So then I can do BJ, giggle giggle. <laughs> and then you, at the end you would do DB just to fix it. So basically, you're still swapping through here, so you're still not screwing up your forms. Does that make any sense? Right, you got a key screen. What's the? Oh, that's an easy solve. <laughs> 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 Well, it wasn't the one. <laughs> 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 